All right. <clears throat> Let's get started. We're going to jump into chapter 5 today. And chapter 5 is all about uh, equations of equilibrium or equilibrium of a rigid body. So I'm going to say equations of equilib. Okay. Before we do that, though, um, let's just review real quickly what we did last thing on Friday with a little distributed loaded problem. So when you see this, what do you see? See if you're engineers yet or not. Okay, so I, I, I hear triangles and rectangles. So I'm going to go ahead and split it this way. So we have two shapes, right? Where will the resultant force for the rectangle be? Dead center in the middle, right? So I'll say this is force of the rectangle. And how about the uh, resultant force of the triangle? Two thirds of the way to the left, yes. That's far more politically correct than two thirds of the way from the skinny end, one third of the way from the fat end, right? So we'll call this the force of the triangle. I mean, what, how should I say that? I don't know. The thick end? The end with more mass. Yes. Hmm. The <laughs> <laughs> All right. So to find these then force resultant. Actually, sorry, I don't have an answer. Yeah, there we go. I uh, know they'll form a committee actually. Okay. So six meters times six hundred newtons per meter would be thirty-six hundred newtons right there. And. Uh, let's see, 900 newton meters, but it's actually just 300. So the area for the force triangle is going to be 300 times 3, but then divided by 2. So I believe that's 450 newtons. <coughs> right? Everybody okay with this? Remember how we did that? Okay. We're going to come back then and solve this problem, and what the, this problem exemplifies what we're changing. So before, we were finding full force system resultants, right? So we figured out how to find the sum of the forces and the sum of the moments. Now we're going to say, but this is statics, so everything has to stay where it is. So we're going to start looking at the connection points that hold this beam where they are and figure out, well, what force does B supply and what force does A supply such that the sum of all of these forces is zero, okay? Before we were saying just what's the sum of the forces and now we're gonna say what's the sum of the forces that causes it to be equal to zero, all right? We want this to be in static equilibrium. So essentially, static equilibrium says that the sum of the forces is equal to zero and that the sum of the moments is equal to zero, okay? So we typically, if we have these as vectors, we actually typically would break this down and say that the sum of the forces in the x is equal to zero, the sum of the forces in the y is equal to zero, and the sum of the forces in the z is equal to zero. And we could do the same thing with the moments. Some of the moments about the x-axis would be zero, some of the moments about the y-axis, zero, and some of the moments about the z-axis is zero, right? So this would fully constrain something in three dimensions to be in equilibrium. We're going to start with the 2D case. And in two dimensions, we'll just say that the sum of the forces in the x is equal to zero, the sum of the forces in the y is equal to zero, and the sum of the moments <coughs> about some point is equal to zero, right? Really, that's the sum of the moments in the z, because all the forces lying in the x, y plane means that the moments would be about the z axis, right? It's O for origin. Okay. So before we jump into this, though, we need to be able to figure out, if we go back 
to this, well, what, what forces do these different connections type, excuse me, these different connection types provide, right? And so <clears throat> we're gonna spend some time today talking about free body diagrams and looking at two-dimensional connection types. Okay, there's a couple pages of them here. So a huge part of drawing a good free body diagram, probably the most significant part of drawing a free body diagram in this chapter is gonna be about figuring out what types of connection forces we have, okay? So a connection, when we draw a free body diagram, remember we kind of free the object we're interested in from space. When we drew free body diagrams in like chapter two or three, we were doing uh, equilibrium of a particle, right? So we just had a dot. Those free body diagrams were pretty simple. Remember, we'd take the Volkswagen bug and we'd simplify it to just be a, a particle. So it had no size, so all the forces had to be concurrent on that single spot. Now, though, we're looking at uh, equilibrium of a rigid body, and the rigid body can have size. It doesn't change shape, but it has size. So now we can have forces and moments acting at different spots on the body, right? So now when we, I'm gonna go back to this maybe for a second. When we look at our Volkswagen bug, so before, not a very good Volkswagen bug drawer. Oh, thanks, Travis. I, that's, that's a fair point. It is great though. Travis just had confidence that I would do a great job. Yes, my bug has lots of tires, okay? It's got a tumor, okay? Don't make fun of it for having a tumor, okay? Uh, so before when we looked at the Volkswagen bug, we said all of its mass was concentrated on its center. We're still going to say that that is where gravity acts on this, but now we can say, look, it's sitting on ground, and there's going to be some interaction with the ground here and here, okay? And so we would have some normal force at A, maybe, and some normal force at B. So now it's no longer fine for us just to say, before we would have said, well, there's MG down and there's some normal up right in the middle. We can't do this anymore because we're looking at the rigid body. And so now we're going to have, we're going to take the rigid body out of its surroundings and look just here. Let's say uh, instead... Uh, another really common one, right, is um, I have a crane, okay? And the crane has a hydraulic cylinder that comes down to some point here, and there's a point here, okay? And this is on the back of a big truck. Yes, it's got three wheels, Michael. Okay, here's my truck. There's, there's the front wheel there so you can see it. Okay. <clears throat> Are you happy? No, okay. So maybe I ask, hey, let's find the forces on this beam here. Okay. So when I pull that out as an engineer, I draw the beam like this. Where do you, where, as I cut that out, where am I, what forces do I need to account for? Do you think? Michael, name one. Okay, maybe there's some gravity on the beam, and we're always going to say that that happens through its center of mass, mg. Okay, who else has a force? If I'm looking at this beam, Brendan. The hydraulic piston. Yeah. Part. So it looks like the hydraulic piston kind of goes someplace along here, right? So I'm going to call that the force of the hydraulics. Okay. Yeah, so let's do this. Um, T of the cable, I'll say. Any other forces? If I remove this off of the truck, think about where I might have to unbolt it. Yeah, 
right here, right? Okay, yeah, pin connection. So there's going to be some force right here, okay? And we don't really know what it is, but we know that there's some something we need to quantify there, okay? And it turns out that it's got um, force in the X and force in the Y, okay? So now when whenever we draw a free body diagram, we actually have to pull out the whole enchilada and then quantify the forces that are acting along it. Now it's going to be really important as we do this that every time we know something about the direction of the force, we make that clear. For instance, mg, we know its direction, right? Mm -hmm. Always down. And this T, it looks vertical, it is vertical. The force of the hydraulics, well, we need to, we'll talk more about that. And the pins we'll talk more about, okay? So each of these places that we've taken it out, notice it touched something except for mg. So pretty much all forces, when we're drawing a free body diagram, are places of touch, where it touches something else, where it interacts with something else, the only exception being gravity. Okay. So if you're trying to draw a free body diagram and you're lost, look at all the places that it's touching something, and you'll know, okay, there's a, there's an, a force there I have to quantify in my free body diagram. All right? So how do you quantify these places of touch? That comes back to this page I flashed up here for just a second earlier. This is page 210 in my version of the book. It's been in every version of the book, though, so you can find it in yours. And this is the different types of connections. Okay. So you can see a cable. The force is just directed along the cable. Uh, here we have a, a weightless link. Okay, so if it's just a little bar, same thing, force directed along it. A roller just provides a normal force. A rocker, also a normal force. Smooth surface is a normal force. Okay. It gets slightly more complicated when we get over here. Here we have a smooth pin, all right? And we can either quantify that as a force with some angle or a force in the Y and a force in the X. Either way, we have two unknowns, right? One, an unknown is an angle, one magnitude. The other one is just two magnitudes and we know the direction. I like this way better, right? Because then you're not trying to solve for an angle and having to put bounds in your calculator, right? It's a very pragmatic reason for why I like this one better, okay? A, a, a sliding collar, so this resists force in a direction and then resists a moment. So this is a, a good thing to realize that if you don't remember this chart, which I don't expect you to remember it all the time, think about how does the connection, what types of motion does the connection resist and that will help you uh, determine where there's a reaction force. So let's look at kind of the three cases of a simple beam. Okay. This is called a simply supported beam, okay? And we draw it with a pin connection on one end and a roller connection on the other, okay? What types of motion does the roller resist? Downward. Downward, right? So it can only provide a normal force there, right? And we'll say, let's call that B. This is A, this is B over here. How about a pin connection? What directions can it resist force in? Uh, X and Y, right? So we could say that this has a force in the Y and a force in the X, right? Does it resist a twist? Ah, so Michael's saying if you look at it from above and tried twisting it, okay, would it be a good resistor of twist in that direction? Yes, it's very good for twist. It actually wouldn't, it, it depends on the size of the pin, right? 
So that's not really how pins are designed to be loaded though, right? Preferably. Preferably you'd find a different way to do that. So we actually wouldn't wouldn't count that in the other direction either. But <clears throat> how about in the XY plane? Does it resist any twist? No. no. Okay. So no moment reaction here. So we're left with F sub Y, F sub X, and normal in the B. How many unknowns is this? Three. Three. Okay. We can solve this. What if I put a pin here as well? Now I would have to say, well, this resists force in the Y and force in the X. And how many unknowns would I have? Four. Right? And I couldn't solve that. That's what we would call statically indeterminate. Because we wouldn't be able to tell uh, how much A F of X holds and how much B F of X holds. Okay? So this is one case. You, you've learned two different types. The roller connection just has a normal. The pin connection has an X and a Y. The third kind of simply supported beam scenario is a beam that's cantilevered out of a wall. Right? This is, we use magic epoxy and we glue it to it or we drill it in and it's pegged in there. <clears throat> Here, where's this thing touch? If I'm looking just at the beam, right? So if I'm drawing a free body diagram of just the beam, where is it touching something? The wall, right, Natasha? So what directions does the glue joint at the wall resist? Uh, motion. Vlad says up. Actually, he doesn't say. He mouths. I can just read lips. Okay, so in the y direction. Okay, you can't pull it off because it's glued on. Okay, can you twist it? Yeah, you're not supposed to. So we would actually say that there, it has a moment at A2, right? So here are our three unknowns in this case that we could solve for. Okay, so this is, this is called a fixed connection. Okay. So let's go back to our problem. We're not ready to solve it yet, but what would the two, or what would the unknown forces in this guy be? Okay, so we, Brennan says a normal at A, and then B sub Y, and B sub X, right? It's whatever direction you draw it in. Yep. Okay. Let's do, let's, I want to spend some time getting some facility with drawing free body diagrams. So let's flip forward in the chapter a little bit and look at some problems. Okay. And I would like you to um, draw the free body diagram for F54. Mm, I can try.
Okay, so if we remove the beam, where's one? Th what's one thing that touches it? The pin at A. And what types of forces would the pin at A put on it? Okay, A Y, A X, and would a pin resist a moment? No, because it could rotate about it, right? Okay. What else touches the beam? Point B, the rope. What direction, Brendan, do you think the rope is going to? In the Y, right? So we would just say that this is the tension, uh, we'll just call it T for now. Okay. And it's straight up because the rope is straight up. And we know that when a cable or rope or anything interacts with something, its force is directed along the line of that rope. Okay. Ah, yes. So the cable also connects over here, right? Still with a force T. It's not a new variable because it's the same rope, right? It goes over a pulley. And one of our assumptions in the class is that a rope has a constant tension throughout its length. So that means if it is pulling at B with a tension T, it's also pulling at, oh, it's not labeled, so we'll call it D with a tension of T. Anything else touching the beam? 80 pounds, right? How many unknowns are there? Three. Three. So we could solve that, right? So let's try another one. Yeah, you'll see in just a minute why we can solve for three. All right, so this is a big problem. The mobile crane is symmetrically supported by two outriggers at A and two at B. Those are down here. Okay. In order to relieve the suspension of the truck upon which it rests and to provide greater stability. If the crane boom and truck have a mass of 18 megagrams and center of mass at G1, right there, and the bottom has a mass of 1.8, excuse me, and the boom has a mass of 1.8 megagrams and a center of mass at G2, right there. Determine the vertical reactions at each of the four outriggers as a function of the boom angle theta when the boom is supporting a load having the mass of 1.2 megagrams. Plot the results measured from zero to, or excuse me, from theta equals zero to a critical angle where tipping starts to occur, okay? Well, so, what object are we interested in drawing a free body diagram of? Can, is it just the boom? No. no, it's the whole enchilada, right? So when we draw our free body diagram for this guy, we need to do our best to draw an awesome crane. got our outrigger here and an outrigger right here. So what would our free body diagram look like? Where does this interact with its surroundings? At A and B, yeah. So we're going to assume the outriggers could slide, right? I mean, it'd be hard, but they could slide back and forth. So we're going to say the only way they provide uh, a force is in the vertical direction. So I'm going to say the normal at A and the normal at B. Now you could say two times the normal at A and two times the normal at B, right? Because it, it says there's two outriggers. Good way to solve it probably since they say there's two outriggers at A and two outriggers at B. Where else does this have something that we know interacting with it? 
Yeah, G2 and G1, we're going to have, I think G1 was uh, 18 megagrams, and G2 was 1.8 megagrams. Anywhere else? Yeah, the load, uh, which is 1.2 megagrams. Okay. This guy here, great question. What about this hydraulic? That hydraulic, we don't need to look at unless we're looking just at this beam because it's internal to the system, right? So this hydraulic would exert, is pushing up on the beam, let's say, right? And therefore it's pushing down on its support down here. And so these guys are equal and opposite and cancel each other. So that's a great example of an internal force. Now, if I asked you to look just at the boom, you could, or if I asked you what force is needed to come up with this, then you would have to look just at the boom, and then that would matter. Okay? Questions about this free body diagram? There's a moment there, right? Where? Just around. Like, as the boom gets lower and more weight will get lower. I mean. Yeah, so absolutely, Brendan. As the boom gets lower, the weight's going to get further and further in front of it, which does cause a moment. But is there anything that, uh, is there a moment reaction? And there isn't. There's just two force reactions. Does that make sense? Not really. Okay. So, um, I understand that the weight of this truck will keep it down. Hopefully. Yeah. But wouldn't you want to include that there is right. some sort of moment force in there? So Brendan's saying, don't we want to include uh, you know, some moment reaction? And the answer is, we'd like to, but there's no support here, right? These are not piles that are driven into the ground that would resist a moment. All these can do is resist a vertical force, right? right? So we're going to have to account for the fact that they're resisting a vertical force as counteracting the moment caused by this guy out here, right? So you, I understand your intuition to say, but we're, we are trying to keep a moment from tipping it over, so we must have a moment reaction. However, we can't do that because there's no moment reaction in our connections. So that's the difference between the free body diagram, right, where we think what, what reactions are happening here, and then when we solve it, we know we have to account for that moment but we're going to do it not by having a couple moment reaction on here, but by having these loads. Okay. All right. Um, here, let's take a quick detour. And I'll show you why that problem matters. Toyota trucks are built to last. You work, you play, you practically live your whole life in them, and they still maintain their value.
guys. I, actually, nothing bad's gonna happen here, guys. I just wanted to show you why it's important. And that right there, friends, is why we do this. That's a bad day. You all right? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. That chimney is no longer. He nailed the chimney. Yeah, that's a bad day. That right there is a really, really freaking bad day. Yeah. So if you're bored at home, you know, because you're not doing your uh, statics homework, you should look just at cranes tipping over on YouTube. Like, you know, like that, or like that, or like that. <laughs> Or like that, or that, yeah, oh yeah, right, good times, okay. All right, we'll go back to lecture, okay? So just in case you think this is a boring, dumb problem, maybe it is, but not doing it is even, is way not boring, okay? So that gets exciting real fast. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, without doing free body diagrams, let's just think here. Where would the forces, oops, I gotta zoom out a little bit. Okay. Where would the, what types of forces, if I asked you to draw a free body diagram of 521 here, so it's a rod that moves up and down on A, right? and then it's a roller at B and a cord at C. So if we were drawing the free body diagram of link AB, what would it look like at A? So, yeah, so the only way this restricts movement is in the X direction, right? Can everyone see that? The only way that A can't move is in the X. So we would put a normal in the X at A. How about at B? In the Y, uh, exactly, Preston's got it, in the Y. How about the force from the rope at C? Yeah, just the tension, so it would lie in the X direction, right? Okay. Let's see here. Um, how about this guy? Because this you see every day, right? At A, what directions would this resist, or what direction would this resist motion in? It's a slider? It's sliding at an angle, but so would we draw it as X and Y? That'd give us two unknowns, right? We'd draw it perpendicular to the axes, right? And then we would know its direction, but not its magnitude. Everyone catch that? This is really important. You could say, well, it, we could do it in X and Y, but that gives you two unknowns. And so if you just do the perpendicular one, you would just have the magnitude because you'd know its direction, right? From this 3, 4, 5 triangle, we could figure out that its direction is perpendicular to that, right? Okay. How about down here at B? It looks. What's it look like? Just in the Y? It's a slope, right? So it's a smooth, round surface. So it's just going to be normal to the slope, right? The five, the famous five, twelve, thirteen. But it's the the fact that it's sloped. We have to give it. It's normal. It can only be normal to the surface there. All right. Okay. How about my jib crane here? We have two pins, so it seems like we'd have four unknowns, right? 
Exactly, Sierra's got it. It's a cable that goes from C to B, and therefore we know the direction of that force. So it would just be one unknown there because we know it's a direction. It wouldn't be a CY and CX. It would just be a tension at 22 degrees. All right? Lots of yawning this morning. It's Monday. Everyone must have worked really hard. Okay. So, we've talked a little bit about the equations of equilibrium in the x direction, or in uh, chapter 5, right? What we're going to get to is the sum of the forces in the x and the y, and the sum of the moments is equal to zero. So let's apply that to our beam here. Okay, we have a good free body diagram now. So we can just write our equations of equilibrium, which writing the equations of equilibrium from now on pretty much is going to be, you know, half the points on quizzes and things like that. Okay, so the equations of e equilibrium here is going to be the sum of the forces in the x are equal to zero. And I'm going to say to the right is positive. So, Brendan, you asked why can we solve for three unknowns? It's because we have three equations of equilibrium that we can solve simultaneously. So, what forces act in the x direction in our drawing? In the x? Looks like b sub x, right? That's it? And we're saying it has to be equal to zero for this thing to be in static equilibrium. <laughs> So we've solved for one of our unknowns. That'd be zero. Okay. Some of the forces in the y direction. Straight up is going to be positive, And we're going to say it has to be equal to zero. So what acts in the positive y direction in our drawing? N sub a plus b sub y. And what acts in the negative direction? Yeah, 450 newtons and 3600 newtons. And that has to be equal to zero. We have two equations, but we have three unknowns. We're certainly going to need another one, right? So now we're going to write a sum of the moments equation. And we can choose wherever we want to sum the moments about. Because if we want the sum of the moments to be zero for this to be in static equilibrium, it could be zero about A, it could be zero about B, it could be zero about some point over here. The deal is we just don't want it to spin. So the way we choose the location of summing the moments is the place that eliminates the most unknowns. So in this case, I would choose right here, sum the moments about B and set that equal to zero. You could also choose A, it would end up working out just about the same. But I'm going to choose B, and counterclockwise is positive because Andy said so. Right? Dennis? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, so if I'm at B, does uh, F sub R cause positive or negative moment? Positive, so it's going to be 3,600 times 3 meters, and that's positive. How about F sub T? Positive or negative? Also positive. 450, where is it? It's 2 thirds from the thin end, so it looks like it's 5 meters away. Okay, right, because this would be 2 and this would be 1. <clears throat> How about NA? Does it cause a positive or a negative moment? Negative, negative NA, and that's 6 meters away, and that has to equal 0. Okay. So we could either pop these in our calculator or we could just solve this bottom one, right? It's one equation, one unknown. So uh, 3,600 times 3, 72, is that 108? 
eighteen thousand? No, I don't know what it is. Ten thousand eight hundred? Yeah. Uh, plus four fifty times five, and divide it by six. Twenty-one seventy-five newtons. Okay, if we have twenty-one seventy-five. Okay. Anyone get a value for by? Eighteen seventy-five newtons. It should be positive. Okay. Uh oh. All right. She's got me. Yeah. Any? Everybody see how we did that? See what I did there? Okay. So let's have you try one. Just move down the page a little bit. Yep. Determine the reactions at the supports. That's it. Okay, and I'm going to call this A, and I would like you to, given this, find reactions at A. Okay. Give you a few minutes to work on that. So draw a free body diagram, set up your equations of equilibrium, and solve. So this is what my free body diagram looks like. We know it A, it has a reaction in the X, the Y, and a moment, right? And we have the two forces. So now I'll leave it to you to write the equations of equilibrium. Didn't, er, Brennan, what'd you get for some of the moments in the X? Excuse me, some of the forces in the X. Yeah. Uh, I got A of X plus 10.6 kip equals zero. And is 10.6 maybe 15 kip times yeah, yeah, that's what, that's what the cosine of 45 right. equals zero? So you found that A of X equals negative 10.6? Yeah. Okay. What's it mean that it's negative? going in the opposite direction that we drew it, right? Okay. Oops. Jordan, what'd you get for some of the forces in the Y? Okay. Victoria? Okay, so I'm going to say 15 sine... 45, uh-huh, uh-huh, equals zero, all right, so we can solve that guy too, right, 
What did you give for a y then? I hear a negative 0 0.607 kip, right? So that would mean that AY is actually going down, and uh, we'd say it's 607 pounds instead of 600, 0.607 kip, right? So actually on the graded problem, I forgot to mention this to you guys. Lots of people were uh, giving me answers that were point blah, blah, blah kip, which you should convert that to be just pounds, right? Because mm -hmm. we're looking for three significant digits that are between zero and a thousand, or between one and a thousand. Okay, so 0 0.607 is not between 1 and 1,000, so make it between 1 and 1,000 by taking away the kit, all right? And then lastly, sum the moments. Where did people choose to sum the moments about? Okay, you can choose to do it about A. That's a good place to do it. You could also choose to do it about here. If this was at all off axis, I would have done it about here. But since you did about A, we'll do it about A. And why would I have done it there? Because it would eliminate me having to do trig over here, right? And I like eliminating trig. Yeah. Sure. Uh, some of the moments about A equals zero. So who's got an equation for that? Uh, Natasha? What? Minus 10 kip times 3. Plus 15 cosine 45 times 6. Technically, if we want to be super anal about it, we'd say this is sine, right? Because we're looking for the vertical piece, but it's the same since it's 45, right? Oh, you did 15 cosine? Okay, so what, what was the lever arm for the cosine, though? No, no, it's okay to do it. So you're saying you did, uh, you had another one that was 15 cosine 45, but then what do you use for the lever arm there? Because what you're doing is you're breaking it into horizontal and vertical, right? So we really actually don't need this one because it goes through the line of action of A, so that one goes away, all right? Do you have anything else though? Yeah. Plus we need the moment at A, right? And then that equals zero. So we have to re remember that we have this couple moment reaction that we don't know, and that's what we're solving for. So negative 30 kip plus uh, 60, so that's um, plus 30 kip feet-ish, e plus MA equals zero. So it looks like MA, is it equal to about negative 30? 33.6 kip feet. And again, that just means that it's actually going in the opposite direction. Kip feet. Kip is uh, pounds. Mm -hmm. And these are three, so it should be feet. Oh, I put meters for my units on two. Wow, good for you. I didn't know it was still this. Oh, you're turning this around on me. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> it's fine. I'm just giving you trouble. Okay. How are people feeling about these beams? Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs in the middle? Okay. Yeah. Most, I mean, most of engineering is in 2D for beams like this. Okay. So why don't you then... If you're feeling good about this, why don't you go ahead and solve this guy for me? We've already done the free body diagram, so just go ahead and write the equations of equilibrium. Who has the sum of the forces in the x for me? Max? A of X? Anything else? Minus. Minus what? Times, uh, one over 
Yep. See right here, it's a one, two, root five triangle, as <laughs> Travis calls it. Well, two squared plus one squared square rooted would be the square root of five for the hypotenuse, so you can just do it that way if you want. So we can't solve for anything yet there. Symbolically. So what'd you get for uh, something in the y direction? Paul? Oh, there's one more. Minus 80, oh, minus 80. Minus 80 pounds minus equals zero. So still can't solve. Moments. Sum the moments. About point D. Yeah, good work. About point D. Why are we summing about point D, everybody? It gets rid of the angled ones. Gets rid of the angled ones. And Andy doesn't like trig, <laughs> right? So if we sum about d, then what do you what'd you have, Nick? I had five feet times negative two pd, or ten feet, I guess. Five feet times t, and, that's and you're calling it negative, right? Because he's putting his pin here, he's looking at this force, and it causes clockwise rotation, so it's going to be negative. What else did you have? Uh, negative ten feet times a y. Mm hmm. Why no AX? Because it's in line with the moment. Right, because it has no lever arm about D. Okay. So now we can solve all three of these at once. Is that something? It didn't give you an answer. This is not very confidence inducing. Sean got something? What'd you get, Sean? Okay, I can believe that, right? Why didn't you like that, Travis? Uh, it was my first time putting in my 36, and so I wasn't oh. sure if it was. Okay. Right. Yeah, no, that looks right to me because there's this big load over here. So essentially, what's happening is this is holding and it's trying to pivot. You know, it would keep going down, and so AY actually has to be holding it holding the, the beam from rotating this way, AY is pushing it down, and that's why we get the negative 61.3 pounds. Okay. And AX being 33.4, that makes sense because this tension is pulling that way, so it's pulling the beam in that direction, so A has to push back in that direction. Okay. All right, so this is uh, section through section like 5.3 in the book. Um, we're all about equations of equilibrium, doing good free body diagrams in this chapter. On Wednesday, we're going to be all about a midterm, right, that covers through chapter four. And I'm going to guarantee you there will be a distributed load problem on it. that may or may not require calculus, right? So remember how to do the calculus for distributed load problems. Um, there will be a uh, force equilibrium problem. Mm-hmm. 
Now this would have to be a particle, right? Okay, and it may be 2D or 3D. Okay. There will be a force system simplification. And I'll tell you, there will be a um, vector moment problem. This is the first time I've been so specific about an exam. So why is that? Because earlier, I heard Dave Favreau in the hall lambasting some of his students because he told them exactly a problem that was going to be on the quiz and then they did horrible on it and he said it was time to have some grown-up talk about if I tell you the problem is going to be on the quiz it means it's going to be on the problem quiz so you should study for it so I'm telling you there you go I'm going to do an experiment and see if you are ma more mature than his students yeah I don't know the sections sorry um, but they should be pretty easy to find based off of those titles there. Okay? Any quick No notes, right? I want you to know this stuff by heart. Okay? Other questions for me on the exam? You can use your calculator. All right. If there's no other questions, I will see you. Wednesday for a really fun puzzle.